Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for Monday, October 25th, 2010. I'm Jim Hall, like you didn't already know that. From 2953 Analytics, filling in for John, who's down in Nashville, Tennessee, driving Nissan's Leaf. We'll hear a little bit more from him later in the broadcast, but first, here's the top news in the automotive world. Sergio Marchionne is ruffling more than a few feathers. According to the Detroit News, Fiat's CEO said the automaker would be better off without Italy and its troublesome unions. Not surprisingly, his comments provoked an angry reaction from labor groups and government officials. The company's been in difficult negotiations with the unions over plans to shutter a factory in Sicily next year. While appearing on an Italian TV show last Saturday, he said that Fiat could do more business if it eliminated Italy from its operations, adding that one cannot forever manage operations that are at a loss. Needless to say, these remarks are unusual for a public figure in Italy. Does this mean Fiat has plans to pull production out of its home country? Mm, don't think so, but it might be interesting to stay tuned. Have you ever wanted to drive a BMW but just couldn't swing the monthly payment? Well now, here's your chance to get behind the wheel of your dream car, if you live in Germany, that is. According to the Wall Street Journal, the company plans to launch a new program called BMW On Demand that allows drivers to rent its vehicles by the hour. In big cities around the world, car ownership is declining, especially among young people, and this is an alternate way to make money without selling vehicles. The plan will allow drivers near BMW's Munich headquarters to rent various models from its lineup. Prices range from 16 euro an hour, that's about $23 for a 1 series, to about $32 an hour for a 7 series. Logically, the company thinks that a lot of people will choose vehicles they can't afford to purchase and that they'll rent them for special occasions. I'd say look for programs like this one to gain popularity around the world as cities become more and more crowded and concerns about pollution rise. Fleet sales are up this year for the Detroit automakers, but the Detroit News reports they're doing a much better job of managing this side of the business than in the past. Previously, the big three would unload slow selling and overproduced models to fleets in order just to boost sales and keep plants running. But this ultimately devastated resale values. Now they're doing a better job of matching production to demand. Last month, fleet sales counted for about a third of the domestic's total sales. But Ford and GM expect that by the end of the year, the number is going to fall to around a quarter of their total sales. More good news for automotive engineers. Last week, we reported that engineers in the auto industry can make good money. And now Ward's reports demand for engineers is surging. Many companies had to shed engineers when the industry crashed, but now as the economy starts to recover, engineers are becoming really hot commodities. With the industry focusing more on alternative energy vehicles, automakers and suppliers are looking for engineers with skills in those areas. But they're finding there aren't enough qualified people to actually fill the jobs. As a result, there's a number of open positions and some pretty good pay for engineers. As I mentioned at the top of the show, McElroy's down in Nashville driving the Nissan LEAF all-electric car. Here's an update from the road and apparently from a pretty hot part of town. Hey Jim, I'm in downtown Nashville right now and man, is this place hopping. But of course, the reason I'm here is that, as you know, Nissan's North American headquarters are just outside of town and I'm on one of the many, many ways of journalists coming into Nashville to test drive the new Nissan LEAF, which of course I got parked right behind me here. As you know, they're gonna be building this vehicle in Tennessee about a year or so from now. But we're going to be driving it around, learning what it's all about. We'll be talking with Mark Perry, learning out about the technical aspects of the car. We'll be talking to, with John Branchall, who heads up all marketing on it. In fact, we're going to be doing an entire show, an entire Autoline Detroit on the Nissan Leaf. And, of course, we'll be dropping segments into Autoline Daily. Anyway, I'm throwing it back to you. Take care of my show, will you? Aye, aye, Captain McElroy. I look forward to hearing what you think about the LEAF after you get back from your trip down to the Volunteer States. Anyway, oh, coming up next, we test drive the brand new 2011 Ford F-150 with its range of all new engines. We'll fill you in on the juicy details right after this. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. Ford is making ways with a 2011 F-150. It's offering four brand new engines in the popular pickup. At first glance, it looks like a best-in-class lineup, but how do they drive? AutoLine Daily correspondent Craig Cole has more. You already know the story of the 2011 Ford F-150. The company is launching four, yes, four brand new engines on the truck, two V6s and two V8s. Now, they all look really strong on paper, but how do they perform in the real world? Well, the company invited Autoline Daily out to its Michigan Proving Ground near Romeo, Michigan to put them all to the test. 
This extravagant event was part of a seven-city tour Ford is putting on to showcase the new truck to dealers and the media. The company set up several displays and a huge pavilion reminiscent of the tents at Oktoberfest in Germany, minus the lederhosen and beer, of course. To highlight the F-150's capability, Ford brought in similarly equipped versions of the Dodge Ram and Chevy Silverado. We had an opportunity to drive all of them back to back on several test loops. More on that in a minute. The two V8s Ford is offering are both strong performers, and I particularly like the 5.0. It's smooth and has a nice rumble to it, just like in the Mustang. But the big news of the day revolved around the six-cylinder engines. EcoBoost stole the show. It handily outmuscled the competition's V8s, even while towing. Here, all the trucks were equally loaded with 6,000-pound trailers. At least that's what Ford told us. The track's steep hills were no problem for the F-150. It tackled them with relative ease, while its rivals struggled. Even though Ford is offering two V8 engines, EcoBoost is so good, they're flat out unnecessary. Driving this point home, the company brought in a chassis dyno to demonstrate its power. The rollers were programmed to simulate a 40 to 70 mile an hour passing maneuver while towing a 10,000 pound trailer. Its 420 pound feet of torque made quick work of this challenge. But for all of EcoBoost's performance, it was not the biggest surprise of the day. That title goes to the base V6. It was amazingly good for an entry level engine. If you aren't doing any serious towing, this is all you really need. It's powerful, it's smooth, and it has an impressively flat torque curve. Just look at the blue line on this chart. Surprisingly, in the real world, on the drag strip, it ran neck and neck with a Chevy Silverado powered by a 5.3 liter V8 engine. The 2011 F-150 offers the best powertrain lineup in the full-size pickup segment. End of story. Beyond the new engines, though, Ford is also adding a number of other refinements to the truck, including electric power steering, remote start, and a new instrument cluster with an integrated LCD screen. Look for the new F-150 at dealerships shortly. Sounds pretty good, and I'm sad to report that I still haven't gotten any stick time in one of these trucks. They look pretty spiffy. Are you listening, Ford? Hey, don't forget to join us tonight for Open Line, the best call-in program on the worldwide interwebs. To participate, just dial 218-936-6581. That's 218-936-6581. If you call now or within the next 10 minutes, no one will answer. This week's pin for the dial-in is 2942. 2942. Remember, you can also tune in on our website, autolinedetroit.tv. The show kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you haven't checked it out already, you should. It's a lot of fun. And that's it for today's show. Again, I'm Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you again soon, most likely the next time John's out of town. Take care.